All right. So here are sort of standard elements of a grant proposal. There's a lot in this list. Um, and if you've applied for grants or if you haven't, you might know that no, hardly any grants are gonna ask you for every single one of these things. Uh, this is just a list of things you could be asked for in a grant, but a grant might ask you for three of them. They might ask you for four or five of them. Um, so don't feel like you have to prepare all of these um, for a grant. You just prepare what they ask you for. But the standard elements that could be asked for are a letter of inquiry, which is actually submitted prior to applying for the grant, a cover letter, an executive summary or abstract, um, which summarizes your project briefly, a longer project description, a bio and a resume or a CV, an artist statement, a budget, a work sample and work sample description or work samples sometimes. And then sometimes they'll ask for supplementary materials that document your work or document your achievements. Sometimes you'll be asked for a timeline and then sometimes for letters of recommendation. So there are a lot of different things you could be asked for. But it's important to note, as I've already alluded to, that no two grant proposals are exactly the same which is what makes grant writing sometimes a little bit daunting and sometimes a little bit confusing because you have to familiarize yourself with each grant before you can even apply. What are they asking you for, um, right? And sometimes they'll ask for some of the documents that I presented in that standard elements list, like foundation grants, some, a lot of times ask you for these documents. So like the Ruth Chinvin Foundation, for instance, will ask for an artist statement, a project description, and a work sample and work sample description. All right, so just three of those documents. Some of them might ask for more. Then a lot of them more and more frequently won't ask for these documents outright. Instead, they'll actually have an application form that you fill out and it will have a series of questions and each question will have a text box with a character limit or a word limit where you will answer online and submit it. Now, these types of grant applications aren't reinventing the wheel though. They're asking for the same information just with their own wording of in their questions. So they might ask instead of for your artist statement saying, so they won't say submit your artist statement necessarily, but they might say in a question, describe your artistic development, pay particular attention to how European art has influenced your, your development or pay you know, particular attention to how your work impacts the community or something like that that's of particular interest to them. So you might be able to use your artist statement but just adapt it slightly to fit what they're, what they're asking for, right? So even if you have an application and they're not asking for these documents outright, these documents will serve as the basis for your answers, if that makes sense. But you do have to adapt your writings for every single grant that you apply for, because none of them are the same. All right, so here are what I'm calling the core components. These are components that I think it's worthwhile to prepare ahead of time. So before you are searching for grants, it's kind of nice to have these in your back pocket. Even if the grants you're applying for use applications, as I said, you can use these to fill in those text boxes. Or if people ask for these documents outright, you'll have them and you can adapt to them for the grant, that grant in particular. So those are your resume or your CV, your bio, your artist statement, and your project description. We'll talk a little bit more um, on its own slide about the difference between an artist statement and project description because that line does get a little bit fuzzy sometimes. Um, but of all of these, I would say the project description, if you're applying for a grant to fund a particular project, is the most important. It's sort of the central hub of your grant proposal, because that's where you're describing the work that you're asking for money for, right? Um, so that is, you know, very, very important to whether you uh, get a grant or not. Um, not to stress you out about it, but it is, it is of central importance. In fact, it's one of the top five reasons that applications are thrown out. That the project description, so if you look at number three here, the project description is unconvincing. The need that you are proposing to fill, the solution proposed, and the projected, projected outcomes all must make a compelling case. 
So that's the number three reason that applications are, are thrown out. The number one reason is also related to your project description. Um, and it says that the project is inappropriate to the funder's stated priorities and interests. The reason that's related to your project description is because one of the things that I'm going to put forward as being of central importance to your project description is making a case for why your project is a perfect fit for the granting institution. So I'm gonna call that fit, the fit argument. Um, so your project description might be the place that you do that. You might not do it in your project description if on the application, they have a question specifically talking about why is this project a good fit for our organization? In that case, you'll talk about it there and won't cover it in your project description because you don't want overlap. But if it's not covered elsewhere, you absolutely need that in your project description, which means both number one and number three here relate to your project description. Number two, four, and five, um, most common reasons that applications are thrown out have to do with clerical issues, right? Not meeting the deadline, not following the instructions of the grant, because again, they're all different. So you can't assume, make any assumptions. Um, or it, not finishing the application or not submitting all of the things that they asked for. So please be sure to read all the instructions on these grants because if you do everything right, if you follow directions and make sure it's complete, you're gonna be the cream of the crop. Some of these grants you know, have thousands of applicants maybe, some of the bigger ones, and you might be aware of that, you may have heard of that and be a little bit intimidated. Well, no, if you just follow the, the directions, you're gonna to rise to the top. You're gonna to be one of the ones that they're looking at that they don't just throw out immediately. So keep that in mind. That's also a very important thing. Um, okay, so let's get into the project description. I sort of established it as important and sort of how it fits in with the rest of the grant proposal. Well, what is it? So the project description is the main narrative about your project. It answers who is involved in creating the project what is the project? Where and when is it going to happen? Why is it important or why should we care? And how does it happen? How is it going to happen? How do you create it, etc.? Like I said, it's the hub around which all of the other components of your grant proposal revolve. It's where you're making the case for support. And it needs to be very clear, very compelling, and very illustrative of your ideas. A lot of times when I'm talking with artists in particular, a thing that comes up, whether I'm reading their project description and asking for more detail, or they're just starting the brainstorming process and they're like, what on earth am I going to put in this? Is the question, how do you describe a project that's still just an idea, right? I'm trying to get funding for this so that I can create it sometimes, right? Sometimes you haven't made it yet. Sometimes you have and you're just trying to, um, exhibit it or, or get it staged or whatever. But sometimes you're actually asking for funding to create something. So it's not made yet. How are you supposed to talk about it in such detail? Well, Rita Robillard, who's a mixed media artist, who's won about $75,000 in grants over 30 years of her career, so a very successful grant writer, said that she describes that project that's just an idea by pretending she knows what she's going to do before she's created the work. Now, I've and I've told a lot of you, if I've met you for a project description and you're like, well, I don't know yet. And I'll say like, well, you just kind of have to pretend a little bit, which I think for a lot of us feels disingenuous. Um, it feels kind of like you're lying, like you're making it a bigger deal than it is or, or something like that. But you can't think about it like that because that's assuming that the project description is standing in the place of the art, that the project description is the art. Project description is not the art and no one's going to assume that it is. The project description is a blueprint for the project. Blueprints change in the making, right? You set a blueprint and for a house and then all of a sudden you decide that you can't have a window there because it's going into your bathroom, right? <laughs> or something like that. And it changes when you're actually creating the house. So you're setting a blueprint, you're not legally bound to it, even if you get the grant, right? You, we understand that things are gonna change and you know, people might drop out or the venue might change or the time might change or whatever, the, the whole you know, medium might change. That's okay. We are just telling us what your plan is and you're telling us with certainty what your plan is. 
And because of that, because it sort of has, you know, you wouldn't get into the nitty gritty of, of how to frame the project and what you're going to do and, and planning that far in advance. So John Hotelianos, who's a, an animator and a social art practitioner, actually said that he uses grant writing because of this as a concentrated experiment um, to, to test out what are the ways in which I can frame my next project that are interesting, not only to a grant panel, but also to me. So I'm not just trying to sell it, but I'm also trying to just figure it out myself, right? How do I want to frame this? Who is this for? What is this? Who is this benefiting, benefiting, et cetera? 